My next guest says that the Fed could be out of ammunition at this point. Joining us right now is Axios Markets Editor and Axios Markets Newsletter author Dion Rabowin. And Dion, it's good to have you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. So great the markets are, do they have this right? They should be where they are. What do you think? Well, the market not only is pricing uh, more rate cuts from the Fed and uh, more central banks, but the market is already pricing in quantitative easing. If you look at the curve, I was talking to some rates analysts yesterday. The market is already pricing in the Fed going to zero and then doing some quantitative easing, bond buying, some of these emergency measures that we saw back in 2008 in the midst of the crisis. Is this so. going to work? I mean, what what can they do? Is this actually going to help in terms of creating stimulus for this act, this economy? Well, look, the market. Um, I'm sorry, the Fed can't actually work to stop the coronavirus, right? They can't contain the virus. They can't create a vaccine. Uh, that's up to policymakers. What the Fed can do is reassure the market, say, hey, we've got your back. We understand. Pump liquidity into the system. Make sure there's not episodes like we saw during the financial crisis where the market is, you know, there's no price. You can't sell the assets that you need. And they're trying to make sure they do that right now. Just keep Wall Street calm. Obviously, you look at those numbers on the screen, Wall Street's not very calm, but things could be a lot worse. Do you, do you see the Fed uh, engaging in any well, what they used to call jawboning, telling the banks, for example, in the energy patch, if this is a company that would be solvent at, say, oil at $50 or $45, make sure they have the credit to survive this current crunch? Well, urge the banks to uh, ease up on lending standards temporarily? That's a big question. I think that's got to come from the president. You know, obviously, President Trump is meeting with some of these big CEOs, meeting with a lot of folks from Wall Street today, and that's something you could see come out of that meeting. But what the Fed's really got on its plate right now is trying to make sure that, that the markets are not freaking out. Because the big thing is here, they don't have as much ammunition as they had. Back in 2008, we were at 5% interest rates. Right now, we're at 1.5 or 1.25 to 1.5. And if the market is right, the Fed's going to cut down 75 basis points at this meeting next week. That's going to take us down to about 0.5 percent interest rates. That's a huge move. And we just saw this from the Bank of England. They're at 0.25 percent right now. ECB's negative. Bank of Japan's negative. Uh, the market is but pricing in huge moves. What I'm trying to figure moves. is, what is this getting us? That's, it, a, it, that's a great what question. Is this it it us? Does, doesn't get you anything in terms of, uh, as Dion said, uh, in terms of the coronavirus. Right. But what the Fed can do is make sure there's liquidity in the system. You don't get a freeze up as almost happened in the fall of 2008. That's all they can do. One, one on that note, the Wall Street Journal writes a story today about the markets are functioning, but it is getting harder to trade because you've had at to record volumes in U.S. Treasuries and in stocks. But in terms of, say, the junk bond market, liquidity was very low going into this weekend, and it got much worse to start this week. And there are lots of smaller bonds, both in the U.S. and Europe, that cannot be traded yeah. at all. So, Dan, you know, last time the Fed cut 50, right, and the market popped and then went right back down yeah. again. I think they're out of juice. And, Steve, to your, to, to your point, you know, the fracking industry has fell out of favor with the banks. And we saw Occidental already talk about cutting, cutting their dividends, stopping stock buybacks. The stock I, price is unbelievably is low. Is unbelievably low. We're already seeing rig count go down. So I, I don't think the banks are going to bail out that that particular industry, yeah. particularly what's happening with Saudi <coughs> and Russia right now. And it, but, but, that, but that's where, the the, uh, right as now. John said, the, in terms of the president, if the Fed can't do it, the president can say, Has to. Lend, lend to these in institutions, and banks will respond. Well, we can they, bail they, them they out, know, which they, is they on know the table. Who, uh, ultimately a bailout yeah, is on the existence. table, yeah. and a bailout's going to happen in some the, way. The president's got to watch it, though, with a bailout. Specific though. industries. Right, particularly yeah. to the oil patch. Yeah. That'll be the first one. That, but look, the oil industry is very unpopular right now. You've got a bunch of divestment campaigns. You've got folks like Bernie Sanders out here shaking his fist at the oil companies. So he's got to watch it. If he does bail out the oil companies, that's something that politically could come back to bite. And that, you say the dominoes that, are set for a recession. Yeah. You're expecting a recession? I'm expecting a recession right now based on some of the folks that I talk to. The economists that I've been talking to over the past couple of weeks have been just cutting down their forecast week after week, day after day. I'm talking with a former Fed uh, chief economist the other day. She says, look, if we don't get a big stimulus package, and she's talking hundreds of billions of dollars by the end of the month, the U.S. is in recession by the end of the year. But what, but what should that stimulus package be? Should this be specific industry, bailout type? What kind of well, in stimulus? Well, in terms of bailing out an industry, you don't do what uh, having a Congress pass a bill or something like that. That's why you do it behind the scenes with the banks uh, being told. Yeah. keep these companies alive. And in terms of stimulus, go beyond the payroll tax cuts. Include income tax rate cuts and, thing, and increase, for political purposes, the earned income tax credit and things like that. Air, airline industries, for sure, Maria, has got to get some help. 
I mean, my favorite airlines, Delta, is already cutting, what, 25 percent, uh, international 15 percent. They stopped 500 million in capital expenditures. A bailout's some... not come to them until they actually start cutting jobs, massive amounts of jobs. They the, cut the in problem 10 is days 100,000 jobs after 9-11. Even that yeah. bailout, though, is that going to get people to fly? No, right. and no, that's, and that's, that's the issue. Look at. No, You've got to make sure that regular people are getting some of this stimulus fund. Yeah. Folks yeah. who work these hourly, these gig workers, someone had to get to them because a payroll tax doesn't get to them. A payroll tax holiday, excuse me, doesn't get to those folks. So you've got to make sure that these people who are low-wage workers, yeah. Brookings just came out with a study back in January, said the av about 44% of people make barely enough money to live on. They've got to get something yeah. out of this, and that's got to help out. Dion, thank you so much. Come back soon. Dion right, Rabot joining us there.